It's a pleasure to be able to talk to you. You know, I I actually did an interview with you about 25 years ago, right after uh, Car really? Wheels came out. Wow, it was a long time ago. So I feel like I feel like I'm catching up with somebody. Yeah, that, uh, I always feel like I'm in touch with you because I've got your music. But it it's that strange thing; it doesn't come back in the opposite mm-hmm. direction. So. Yeah. Congratulations. You know, it's pretty cool when you're Thank 40 you. plus years into a career and you can say, I'm having a banner year. Yeah. <laughs> Which you definitely are. You're staying busy, new album, and you have the book to go along with it. Yeah. I see those two as companion pieces. Is that correct? Yeah, I would look at them. That, you know, it wasn't a necessarily, a. I wasn't thinking of it like that when I went in. A lot of people have been asking me, is there any, are there any overlapping things between the book and the record? I mean, you know, it, yes, but I didn't go into, when I was writing the songs, I wasn't, I'm in a separate frame of mind when I'm writing a song as opposed to writing a book, you know, but of course there are going to be similarities because I draw on a lot of the same subjects when I'm writing songs. Yeah, you know, I I do find it amusing that you uh, titled your memoir, Don't Tell Anybody the Secrets I Told You, because it feels like you told us so many secrets just in your songs. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you you go into detail in the book. Yeah. I think the editor suggested that title and I thought it was kind of clever and cool. So I said, okay, (laughs) you know. Um. But the thing is, I was, I, whenever I've been, whenever I've performed, you know, my usual thing is to tell the story behind the song before I play the song. And, you know, a lot of times I did, I wouldn't have time to really get, go into that much depth into the story because I just didn't have time to do that. But people always want to know more, you know, like who, especially, some of the love songs, who is that written about and everything. And I was always a little, you know, shy, shy about talking about who and every, uh, when it came to those kinds of songs. But So I thought I would dive into that a little bit more in the book, you know. You certainly do, and, but... Um, <laughs> I hope it's not with... too much, though. So. Oh, I don't think anybody thinks too much. Okay. <laughs> So the as I listened to the record, you you opened stories from a rock and roll heart um, with a song that I don't know any other way to describe it other than celebratory. Yeah, exactly. That's a great. I love hearing that word. You know, it's been described as um, about surviving and and you know coming through difficulties and all that. And of course, there's some of that in there, but. I like to think of it as a sort of, you know, people ask me this also, do you think music can save, you know, can rock and roll save the world kind of thing, you know? And I do, I mean, I basically believe in that philosophy, you know, and it's kind of that, it kind of says that I think too. I think it's interesting that you you open this record uh, in such a fashion, because, you know, you, you've been through a lot. Everybody's gone through the pandemic. Everybody gets separated from people. You dealt with a stroke, which is a major life-changing yeah. event. Yes. And yet, you know, it almost feels like as this album opens, you are saying, I'm here. I'm okay. I'm not going anywhere. Get used to it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'm I'm here to rock, you know. Which and is something the- I think you've always done. Right. I don't know. I guess I surprised myself a little bit, even with that. I, everybody's been telling me, you know, that I've bounced back so quickly and everything. And I always tr- attribute that to really good physical therapists and my stubbornness. Good <laughs> to it have really, that. It, it really, the recovery from a stroke is like, man, you know, I didn't even know what a stroke was exactly before this. And usually I always thought, Older people had them, like my grandparents or something, you know, but they can happen at any time to anyone at any age. With something like that happening, um, you know, everybody thinks about, you know, how difficult that is. 
But with any difficulty, when you've come through it, there tends to be a silver lining. You learned something, if nothing else. Is there any silver lining to what you went through? Well, that's a good question. Um, now, if I can answer it in the same brilliant way that you asked it, um, I guess it's just knowing my own strength, you know, and feeling proud of myself for getting through it and you know I'm still getting through it I mean you know I'm I'm still in recovery it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing you know I had to learn to walk all over again because you're it's basically a form of brain damage in a way because it's a blood clot and it something goes haywire you know and so the rest of your body forgets what to do basically because your brain tells your body what to do like put one leg in front of the other well now your brain is all mixed up because of the you know because of what happened so you have to retrain your brain basically you, you sort of have to trick your brain by and you do that by they give you all these exercises and you just it's like repetition you just do them over and over and over until your brain figures out Oh yeah, okay, I remember now. I'm supposed to tell the leg to move this way, you know. It's really a trip. I've learned so much about how the brain works and the body and everything. And that is a silver lining. I, I would have to say that if I see something coming out of this, it's how people pulled together behind you, whether it's your band and making yeah. sure that you could write the songs that you wanted to write yeah. and record them, back you up on stage, but also you know, people who popped in on your records, people who said, I want to be there for Lucinda. Yeah, I think, I guess there was a feeling of that, you know, that everybody wanted to rally. That's the the spirit of the album, I think, in essence, right there. You know, it's, I mean, I still get excited and I still get a little tingle when I hear Bruce's voice. You know, I just, it's like, I'm such a fan. I just start fanning out, you know, I'm like, oh my God, it's Bruce. Because he, it's, you know, somebody pointed this out that the songs that we have him on sound like his, they sound like Bruce type songs, you know, and that you're was beating all me to, You're beating me to my next question, which was, huh. I have always heard your songs of Bruce Springsteen songs sort of in the same category. There's yeah. a connective tissue there. We seem to be kind of, you know doing the same sort of thing with in our songwriting that we had this thing a thread sort of running between us as artists and I've always felt that too he is just so down to earth and sweet as can be and you know something that that he does in his songs and that you do not just in the album and the songs that you write but I also noticed in the book you talk about major issues, you know, traumas that happen in life, whether it's, you know, dealing with your mother's mental illness or losing friends to suicide or dealing with difficult relationships. But in the, you also add in these little details like a dinner that you had, a conversation that you had, um, a gift of a, of a piece of jewelry that somebody gives to you. I think you can learn a lot from a character, not just from the trauma that they go through, but the little things that they value. Nobody else has pointed that out before. Thank you. <laughs> but it is a, an important part of of your work. It's it's one of the things when people say, well, what is it about Lucinda's music that makes it special? And sometimes I think it's those really basic details that you can overlook, but they just fill in the gaps. And you do that a lot in this book. And speaking yeah. of the book, I, I want to go back a little bit to your, your childhood. You know, the we're talking a lot about rock and roll and how you have this rock and roll heart, this rock and roll soul. And growing up, you're really the rock and roll heroes that were around you early on were writers. They weren't actually musicians, but those right. guys were rock and roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were rock and roll, definitely. I came to see that as more of an attitude as much as anything else. Like, you know, like being punk is kind of an attitude as much as it is the music. Like, I always used to say Hank Williams was a punk. I can definitely hear right. that. Yeah. So your music also, when I listen to it, 
I think of you as like this strong, independent woman. But in really listening to the details and in reading the book, that is a hard fought position to have. You didn't that just doesn't come easily. And it's I, I shouldn't assume that about you at all times. I mean, I guess I didn't realize it. You know how it is when you're thinking about your own life. You don't think, you know, we don't walk around going, oh, God, I had such a hard life and everything, you know. So I didn't want it to come across like that, you know, like, oh, poor me, you know. But I did want to talk about my family life enough to provide a base because that's it informs so much of what I do. I might have mentioned this in the book, but I ran into this elderly gentleman one night, one time in a bar in New York City, started talking to him and telling him I was a musician and I was writing a book. And he said, you know how elderly gentlemen are. He starts saying, now, young lady, you know, he says, you don't need to write it. Let me give you some advice. He says, just write about your music and your career. People don't need to know, don't want to know about your background, your family, your childhood. He said, you don't need to go into all that. Just talk about your career. I did the opposite. Well, I did talk about my career, but I did talk about my childhood because because it does inform so much of what I write about now. I think it, it's an important part of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, you, you just mentioned bars there, too. And I wanted to ask you a question about this. There's a couple of songs on here on the album that to me really sound like you're paying tribute to bars. And there's even a story uh -huh. in the book. I remember reading it was a Christmas and you're like, I think you're still a teenager and you wander into a bar on Christmas yeah. night. It's always been an important part of like, there's community or something there for you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You understand. It's sort of a refuge in a way, you know, that feeling when you anywhere, I mean, it could be a bar or anything, but, you know, especially if it's cold outside and you wander in and there's a warmth in there and maybe you see somebody you know and you go, hey, and, you know, and they say, hey, come on over. And, you know, you take a seat at the bar and the bartender's real friendly and comes over and you talk to the bartender a little bit. And, but yeah. that was also, my mother was kind of spiraling out, I think, over that period, so... I think I went with my brother somewhere. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very warm story. And I really like how, you know, it, it gives me a sense of of who you are. And I, I start thinking about, you know, this young woman who's trying to to figure out, you know, what your music is going to be. And your first two albums are very, very much based in traditional blues and folk music. Mm hmm interesting choice for our yeah. first couple of records like you and Bonnie Raitt were sort of in that area folk music was really my start where I got my start you know listening to other folk singers because it was the when I started playing guitar and singing songs was in 1965 I took guitar lessons and that's when I really started sitting around singing trying to learn songs and all that and so those those were the artists I gravitated to because that it was the height of the folk boom, you know, Bob Dylan and not just him, but a slew of all kinds of great Gordon Lightfoot, Buffy, Buffy St. Marie, Donovan, Judy Collins. Well, that music is still, I hear kind of, that's the foundation for what you do, but you put all these new layers uh, over it as you learn, as you learn more of what your sound is. And what, what always uh, just makes me just amazed is when I go back and listen to those records, and I'm sure it does the same for you, and that's your voice. Because, you know, you were the voice of a 27-year-old, then you were the voice right. of a 25-year-old, and and here, yeah. your voice on this record, this a is a lived, <laughs> it's, it's a lived in voice. It's a woman who knows what she thinks and knows what she wants to do with her voice. Yeah. Well, I've learned so much about, I've learned how to sing. I mean, I, over the years, you know, I've had to do that. How not to push too much with my voice and just hold back at the right times and push at the right times. And working with good engineers in the studio has helped a lot too. Like people like Ray Kennedy, you know, like he gives me the right microphone to sing through in the studio. He knows how to work with my voice because we've worked together so much. 
So that makes a big difference too, I think. Yeah, and, and I have to go back also to 1998 or even a couple of years before that for Car Wheels. Uh, yeah. In 1992, you released Sweet Old World, which I remember finding that record and thinking, I can't wait for the next one. And I had to wait, as did everybody else for that next one. And I know that you had to to basically re-record that. And many years ago when we talked, we talked about how women are just... a approached very differently. If a, if a man goes into the studio and says, I don't like this, this isn't working for me. He's a perfectionist. He's professional. He knows what he wants. When yeah. a woman does that, it's like, oh, she's, she's whiny. Difficult. Yes. She's whiny, you know, wah, 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 you know. <laughs> but you fought for that record. The Well, you're thinking of when I re-recorded Car Wheels mm -hmm. with, with Steve Earl and Ray Kennedy. <clears throat> yeah. Because there were a couple of tracks that I was frustrated with. And what happened in between was that Steve Earle initially asked me to come in and sing on his album, which Ray Kennedy was also engineering. And I went in to sing on Ray, on Steve's album, and I loved the sound he was getting so much on his record. And it was more the way I wanted my record to sound. That's what led to that. And... Initially, we went in just to re recut a track or two, but it sounded so good, we just kept going and ended up <laughs> recording the whole album over again. But it sounded so much better, though. But you, you've had so many great records now. I mean, you've just, I'm sure that as you're releasing them, you kind of keep your fingers crossed because you're never sure how other people are going to respond yeah. to them. You know, you have a sense of it. But, you know, how are other people going to respond? But I wonder yeah. if you're at a point now where as you release this new album, Stories from a Rock and Roll Heart, you say, you know, this is it. This is who I am. And I don't really worry about what anybody else thinks about it. I guess to some extent, I, I mean, you have to get to that point at some point because you got to let go, you know, and I have trouble doing that sometimes. I, you know, I keep because the more you listen to it, Every after you record, you keep hearing things, you know, like, oh, I don't know about, let me, I don't want to go fix that notes out of tune. I need to re, I need to fix that. But then the way I deal with that is I have people I trust. You know, you have to have that. You know, it's like a, a safety net where I, like my husband, Tom, is also my co worker, co producer. You know, I asked him and Ray Kennedy, hey, you guys, can you listen to this and tell me if you think it's out, of, if it's pitchy, you know, and so they listen and they go, no, it's fine. Are you sure? Yes, Lou, it's fine. It's great. You sound great. You're singing your ass off, you know, so that's kind of the pr part of the process. Well, I hope as you were putting the memoir together, as you look back on your life that you said, wow, this is kind of an amazing story. I mean, it's different when you're in it, you know, but. I mean, just think of the characters, you know, including your parents, including your yeah. siblings, including all of the band members that you've had over the years and yeah. all the people, you know, you are getting the kind of recognition. It took a long time to get, but a lot of people don't get that recognition. Here you are. And, you know, I saw Chrissy Hind uh, tweeted about you saying, oh, I got to meet Lucinda Williams. Is it like, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, so, I love her. We've been texting back and forth. Well, she clearly thinks I look up to her a lot, you know. Yeah. We're about the, we're about the same age, you know, but I still ask her advice about things and you know, she was working on her book. She was just finishing her book when I was doing my, when I was starting mine, you know. And she said, "I decided to be nice this time and not go to the dark side. I and, still have to read that book. Yeah, it's really good. Well, talking about your book, you wrap it up at the end with a sort of a to-do list, things that you still want to do. Uh, are you working on that? I'm trying to remember what that was. Well, there's the book. books to read, movies to watch, new foods to try. Really? Places to go. Yeah, it's a I great, forget. you should go back and read that little to-do list. I need to go back and look at it, Yeah. 
Well, I want to add one more thing to that to-do list. And I don't know so much if it's you or if it's on all us Lucinda fans to deal with it, but I'm looking at this and thinking, she's got a rock and roll heart. She's a rock and roller. Why is this woman not in the rock and roll hall of fame? Because I think oh, the next step, we need to get heart. you in there. Bless your heart. You'd be there with Tom, Tom Petty. I and know. He's another soul. I, I feel like we are we had this connection. You know, I'm still kind of grieving over his passing. Because we were just starting to get to know each other better. And then he asked me to open those shows for him at the Hollywood Bowl. And the last shows he ever did. And, you know, it's such an honor. And, you know, then he was gone. And it was just, you know, that whole few days was just mind-blowing and surreal, kind of. Especially the in cyber world, because people were going, saying that he he passed. And then somebody else would say, no, he's not. You know, he's still alive. He's okay. And I'm like, what the hell is it? You know? Yeah, those were tough times. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Lucinda, I know you have a lot more work to do. Um, you're, That's you're on okay. Your I like talking with you, though. I just, I wanted to tell you, too, that you're a really good interviewer. Oh, well, thank uh -huh. you. Thank you very much. It's it's a pleasure to be able to talk to somebody and it's like, I can't make music, but I sure am curious about it. You know, yeah. and I and I, I saw you perform with your dad um, many years oh, ago. Oh, good. And it's just, it's an amazing journey. And watching somebody who's worked as hard as you have it to me um it makes me want to work harder oh thank you yeah you know many years ago the way i first discovered your music i was doing a show on wip i was still a volunteer host and um i was featuring albums and a guy called me up and said listening to your show i know somebody you need to find out about and he told me your name and at that time it was when the rough trade record had just come out oh yeah so i went to the store and i bought it and i took it home and i was like oh my gosh this guy was right this i've got to feature this next week so i'm, I'm very proud to say that i'm the first person in pittsburgh who played your music here wow and that was you. my honor thank you that means yeah. a lot Thank well, you. there are other people out there that recognized early on that you had something yeah. special, really special. And, you know, you. It's, it's it's a pleasure. It is an absolute pleasure. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know okay. it's valuable. Well, I just really appreciate it and appreciate you and what you're doing. I've, I've, always, I've had so much great support from so many great radio stations. You know, especially a lot of the independent ones. And well, if if you get the chance, I mean, I know that right now the Pittsburgh isn't on on your tour dates, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hope that at some point we'll get to see you here again. I'm gonna yeah. mention it. I'm gonna mention it to Tom as soon as we get off here. I know. I know. I know. We got we got folks that want to see you. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. So if you come through town, let us know and whatever, you know, whatever support you need, you're going to get it here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have a great Thank afternoon. Thank you. You too. finish up that coffee. I know I did. And I'm ready for another. I'm going to get another cup. As soon as <laughs> okay. Well, you take care, Lucinda. It's been an absolute honor and Thank you. Uh, best of luck to you as okay. you head out there on the road. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.